Hello, you absolute legends. This is the hardest video I've ever had to make. And no, the title is not clickbait. I cheated in a speedrun and I've gotten away with it for years. I understand this might come as a shock to most of you. Recently, I've made a name for myself as someone who has been very outspoken against cheaters in video games. Honestly, I can't stand them. But maybe one of the reasons is that I can't stand myself. Or at least, the person I used to be. Perhaps I saw exposing cheaters as a means of redemption for my past sins. A way to cleanse myself of the overwhelming guilt I felt for cheating in a video game. Unfortunately, as hard as I tried, I never could quite shake the guilt. It followed me around everywhere I went like a bad smell. At night, I would lay awake for hours, contemplating all of the damage I'd caused and dreams I'd shattered. As of late, however, there was a new thought that went through my head during my restless hours. It was the thought of being caught. The bigger I get, the more likely it is that people would start snooping around trying to find any dirt they could. If my secret was uncovered, it could be the end of my career. This kind of bombshell would be unrecoverable. I would simply never be trusted again. So I figured I'd expose myself. Not in the way you're thinking, I'm pretty sure that's illegal, but rather I'd expose my dark history. Maybe through my honesty, I can salvage at least a sliver of my reputation. In today's video, we will take a look at the time I cheated in a speedrun and got away with it for over 20 years. I really hope you enjoy. Now legends, I have to be honest, I've lost a lot of sleep lately, anxiously awaiting my dark secret to be uncovered. But on the plus side, it's given me a lot of extra time to play the epic tactical shooter, War Robots. War Robots is the OG mech-style combat shooter where you take control of massive war machines and battle in teams of 6v6. The game is celebrating its 8th anniversary, has amassed more than 200 million players, and is getting better with each year. Now, some people are brawlers who like close quarters combat, but you all know I'm definitely more of a camper who likes to snipe from long distances while my teammates sacrifice themselves in my honor. The game gives you freedom to play exactly how you want, given that there are so many different robots and weapons. As part of their 8th anniversary celebrations, War Robots has had a huge update with heaps of new weapons, drones, and pilots, and at the start of this event, you will receive 150 silver event coins, and additionally, 100 bronze coins for each year your account is spent in the game. If you use my link or QR code, you will receive a bonus armed robot, 2 gecko weapons, 100 gold, and 50,000 silver. Also, returning players with an account level of 15 or higher get a free Sheriff Demeter, as well as a ton of other gifts. Again, just scan this QR code or use the link in the description. In September of 1998, issue 18 of 64 Magazine was released. 64 Magazine was a UK-based magazine that was sold throughout Europe and Australia. As was customary, the magazine featured a dedicated section where people could submit their high scores. This was a time before the internet was commonplace. In fact, in the 90s, most people didn't have an internet connection at home at all. While some online scorekeeping websites did exist, a great example being N64 High Scores, the way most kids in those days compared their skills to one another was through magazines. In the case of 64 Magazine, their high score section was called Score Zone. It wasn't a particularly large database of scores, but it housed scores for some of the most popular games at the time, such as GoldenEye, Mario Kart 64, and Diddy Kong Racing. Originally, it was only a two-page spread, but as more games were released, it eventually grew to four. So going back to September of 1998, issue 18, this was an important issue because in this issue, embedded next to the GoldenEye fastest times, was a challenge. To beat every level in GoldenEye on the double-O agent difficulty in less than 60 minutes. This was a pretty crazy challenge to give people. To put it into perspective, a total time of less than 60 minutes would still put you in the top 20 two years later in the year 2000. Shockingly, the challenge was completed. Four months later in December of 1998, inside issue 22, 64 Magazine announced the winner. Michael Williams from Cardiff was the man to do it. They listed out all of his times, and it was truly an impressive feat. 
So why am I telling you this? Well, it just so happened that this particular issue was the very first video game magazine I ever bought. And it's one of the reasons I got into GoldenEye speedrunning to begin with. I was amazed at Michael's times, and I spent months throughout 1999 trying to beat as many as I could. It was during this process that the competitive fire within me was ignited. I had discovered the world of competitive high scores. Unfortunately, 64 Magazine wasn't the most stringent record keeper. I didn't notice at the time, but looking back, the cracks were already starting to show. Some of the scores that were posted weren't realistic for the time. For example, Bunker 2 26 wouldn't be achieved until 2001, and Streets 114 wouldn't be realized until 2002. It was clear that some funny business was going on. Most times at this stage did seem legitimate, however. For example, Mathiston Hum was a highly ranked GoldenEye speedrunner in the early 2000s. The problem wasn't just questionable times either. The magazine either didn't know or didn't care to differentiate between PAL and NTSC submissions. On many games, most importantly the racing games, NTSC runs considerably faster. Given that this was a European magazine, it would make sense to only include PAL times, but it was clear from games like F-Zero X and Mario Kart 64 that several players were submitting NTSC times. Naturally, not only would almost every kid who buys this magazine not have NTSC, but they probably didn't even realize it existed and that it produced faster times. This applied to myself as well, and from my perspective, it just seemed like people were achieving impossible scores. As months went by, the problem got worse. And I didn't discover what was happening until late 1999, when my family finally connected to the internet. It was then that I discovered the official GoldenEye rankings and could cross-check the scores that I saw in the magazine. And it was bad. For example, from issue 34, published in December of 1999, we see times like 40 seconds on facility. Streets 112 already existed apparently, and also Control 340, which beats the current world record by 15 seconds. And John Burroughs, if you are watching this, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. The problem is that all you needed to show was your best time, which they would blindly accept. It's incredibly easy to abuse this by simply using a Game Shark or any other cheat device. Still, even though I could see cheated scores starting to fill up the magazine, I still loved the score zone section, or at least the principle of it. And I was so enamored that I even convinced my mum to let me send some photographs to the UK to be featured. So I grabbed the family camera, took a few photos, and anxiously waited for them to be developed. When the photos did finally come back, it was devastating. I didn't realize the flash had to be turned off, so the TV screen was just a square of pure white. The second batch, without the flash, fared much better. In January of 2000, I sent them off to the UK and crossed my fingers they would be accepted. Four months later in April of 2000, my dreams were realized. Issue 38 saw my name published for everyone to see. It was amazing. I had three scores listed for Rogue Squadron and a single score for Shadows of the Empire. I can't remember if I included any GoldenEye times, but by that time the game had already completely jumped the shark. 110 for Aztec, are you kidding me? The current world record is 122, and that's using some insane strategy that was only found in the last few years. I only had a couple of poorly placed scores featured, but it still felt great, and I wanted more. April of 2000 is also when I joined the GoldenEye World Rankings, and I really started to become obsessed with speedrunning. I got really good really quickly. In fact, I got so good that I was even achieving times that would beat most of the cheated scores in the magazine. Sure, some levels were impossible to rank on. Levels like Depot, where you could just turn on walk through doors and easily get a crazy time. But there were also levels that still required some skill, even if you could walk through doors. Levels like Train or Egypt. So after seeing how successful my last batch of photos were, I decided to step it up. This time I would go all out, and send a VHS tape. This was far easier and quicker. Issue 42 in July of 2000 is when my new scores would be published. 
I had managed to sneak in some bona fide Goldeneye times amongst all the cheaters. I had also improved my Rogue Squadron times and even included some more obscure challenges like Marathon Race in Ocarina of Time and Fastest Win in WWF Warzone. There's John Burroughs again, always out to get me it seems. All things considered, I had done well for myself. I was never ranked first in anything, but who could blame me? I was faced with an insurmountable challenge. But I did get quite a few scores in there, and I was very proud of myself. I wasn't completely satisfied though. I didn't just want my times mixed in amongst the dozens of cheaters that were abusing the system. I wanted the ultimate prize. I wanted to be the ultimate player. Every month, 64 Magazine would choose someone as their ultimate player, and they would receive a prize. It was a Trident controller and a memory pack. I remember thinking how it would have been epic to win, though now I realize it probably would have been terrible to play with. Still, I wanted it. I wanted it badly, and I felt like I deserved it. In order to become ultimate player, however, I needed to be first. Nothing else would suffice. But I had a problem. I didn't own many games. I couldn't compete in my best game, Goldeneye, because all of the times in the magazine were done with a Game Shark. And I couldn't compete in racing games like F-Zero X, which I was very good at, because everyone else was sending in NTSC times. It seemed truly impossible. There was no way I could become the ultimate player in these conditions. But then, it hit me. I wasn't considering the most important factor in video game competition. I wasn't considering the human element. I realized that I need to harness the energy of the ancient gamers, who could do anything. I needed to harness the power of the greatest gamer that ever lived. You're familiar with Billy Mitchell, world video game champion? He could probably do it. So I gotta find a way to harness his power, and I think I found a way. That's right, we're gonna cheat. I decided to cheat. I couldn't cheat in just any game though. It had to meet certain criteria. First, it had to be regularly listed in the score zone section. Sending in scores for some random game probably wouldn't achieve anything. Secondly, it had to save your best time even if cheats were used. And finally, it had to involve in-game cheats such as push button codes because I didn't own a Game Shark. The only game I owned that fit all of these was Shadows of the Empire. I really didn't like the game at all, but it was my only chance. Shadows of the Empire has a push button code where you can enter a debug mode. This gives you the option of turning on invincibility, among other things. So on the first level, Battle of Hoth, I would turn on invincibility and just crash into enemies, which was the fastest way I knew how to kill them. Even with cheats, I still couldn't get first on every level, but in all fairness, the guy who beat me probably cheated. I did get first on most levels though, which I felt was enough to secure my position as the ultimate player. Along with my excellent Shadows of the Empire times, I sent in better Goldeneye times, better Rogue Squadron times, and even scores for Donkey Kong 64 and Star Fox. I really went all out. Everything was legit, except for Shadows of the Empire. I just needed those handful of first place scores to really show them how much of an ultimate player I was. I had my mum send off my VHS tape, and I waited in anticipation. December 2000, issue 47. This was it. This was when Carl Jobst made 64 Magazine history. My scores looked absolutely gorgeous in first place. My scores were everywhere. I was featured on every page. Now all I had to do was read the announcement that I was the chosen ultimate player. Back once again is ScoreZone, a meeting place for all of you who have something to prove. Things have been slow recently in both volume and variety, but with all of the new stuff pouring out onto shop shelves, there are plenty of new challenges for some of you to rise to, and then for others to try and beat. You know how it works, so grab your best times, achievements, scores, post them our way, and there might be something in it for you. The lucky guy this month is David McKinney who has supplied us with some more scores for track and field summer games. It's all very well filling out the old favorites, but we'd like to see some more new kids on the block. There you've been told. What? They gave it to some random guy who sent in scores for some random game and got all first place by default because he was the only one. What a ripoff! I was stunned. I definitely should have won. 
but I guess I can't be too mad as I did cheat after all. Though on the other hand, so did everyone else, so technically everyone was playing by the same rules, therefore no one was cheating. Yeah, I definitely got robbed. Man, it feels so good to finally get this off my chest after 20 years. I want to sincerely apologize to anyone who was hurt by my fake Shadows of the Empire scores. I want to apologize to 64 Magazine and all of my fellow competitors. Everyone except for John Burroughs. In order to make things right, I've decided to retire from submitting scores to 64 Magazine, and I will notify them of my dishonesty. They haven't published an issue in 20 years, but if they do, I will make sure to have my fake scores removed. As for all of you, I hope you'll find it in your hearts to forgive me, you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.